guys I'm just going to look at um, the role of players and what the difference between players and stakeholders are and I'm just going to uh, use it through the case study of the Olympic Park now in the textbook which is again is this textbook that we're using the uh, edit so on um, this is on page 237 to 239 there's quite a big case study on the Olympic Park it's got quite a lot of information in if you go online you find huge amounts of information on the Olympic Park really good videos and things like that as well so I'm just going to start off with a difference between a definition between players and stakeholders because uh, it's it is a little bit confusing. Now a player is a group or an organisation or an individual who's involved in the decision making process for the regeneration. So it could be the national government, the local government, uh, businesses, pressure groups or non-government organisations, but they are involved in the decision making of what's going to happen. Now, a stakeholder, again, is a group or an individual of anyone who's potentially affected by the outcome of a project. OK, so there can be an overlap. Um, a player can also be a stakeholder. But if you just think about the players and the people who are involved in the regeneration, which so when you get a question on that, uh, you're thinking about which players were involved in the regeneration process and we'll look at that in a second. And then if you're asked about stakeholders, that could be people involved in the area, but um, they're involved in, in the outcome, if you see what I mean, what's the um, anyone potentially affected by the outcome. But again, th there is an overlap because somebody, a business could be involved in the decision making, they could all be also be a stakeholder as well. So don't get too caught up with that, but that's the general difference between the two. So players, as I said before, are different groups of people involved in a regeneration and different players and groups will judge the success differently because they've got different criteria. So as I said in the last video, you need to look at what what the outcomes are for the different groups of people. So if it's local residents, the outcome is going to be, you know, what they want is going to be very, very different to maybe what the local government wants or, uh, you know, a business or an investor wants. Because if an area gets a lot busier, then obviously that's good if you are a business, but it's maybe not so good if you're, you know, environmental group or, uh, you know, a group of local people who, who see a lot of congestion in the area, or a lot of air pollution or um, crime increase, etc. So when you look at judging the success of a, a, one of the case studies, you need to look at it in that way. So the players that were involved in the Olympic Park, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go through the different um the different investors so private sector investment um, are property developers etc and companies and private sector means it's you know it's, pri it's it's nothing to do with the government so obviously Westfield retail they were all private um, private sector um, organizations and that that were involved in there um, we've then got gov uh, public sector investments which is the UK government now the Olympic Park HS2 they were invested in by the you know the, the, the national government um, the UK government. So that is public sector. So public sector means the government's involvement and private sector means private companies. And then what tends to happen, London Docklands, this is a good example here, the most common is a public private partnership because obviously quite often the local or the national government or the regional government doesn't have enough money and it needs the it need or it has you know some money and it needs extra money or extra investment or you know it can't do it all itself so quite often a lot of these are partnerships they're what we call public private partnerships and if they need quite a lot of money um, then they will go down the route of working together because obviously one one's got the expertise and some money and the other one's got a bit of money and maybe you know can um, get the planning regulations through and things like that now, like I said before, stakeholders, when we're looking at, um, they are people who gain or lose something within the um, regeneration. So the key players in the Olympic Park were the UK government. This was obviously uh, backed by the national UK government because it was such a huge top down um, regeneration scheme. Um, the scheme. Uh, which obviously you know brought the Olympic Games to the UK and um, the local government were obviously involved because of the area where it was in Newham uh, the London Assembly which is regional government was involved as well because it was London uh, local economy and local businesses were involved there environmental groups were obviously involved and local people were involved as well so all of those are stakeholders they've got something to gain or lose by that regeneration but just remember what I said is that when you're looking at the players players normally talks about the people that are 
involved in the regeneration process, whereas a stakeholder would be somebody who could gain or lose from the redevelopment. Like I said before, you can have overlap, so don't get too caught up in it, but um, just so you know the difference between the two. So the Olympic Park's a really good example uh, looking at um, large amounts of investment, and it was a very, very large project, obviously, because it was for the Olympic Games, and it involved a lot of different players from the very top level, which was the national government, all the way down to the local residence groups who are obviously um, forced out of like Clays Lane and places like that. So it's a really good um, case study to have the Olympic Park case study because uh, there's many uh, players and there's many stakeholders and there's lots of um, advantages and disadvantages to what happened. We can look at it in terms of um, it was very beneficial for some groups of people, but not as beneficial for maybe local people, etc. So again, when you look at the Olympic Park, you need to look at what the area is like before. Uh, why does it need regeneration? Why was that area earmarked for regeneration? What the process was of the Olympic Park? Who was involved in that? What players were involved in it? What, um, in the regeneration? And then what were the outcomes for the different stakeholders? Okay. And again, as we've said before, you need to be looking at as in what were the impact on the index of multiple deprivation on different groups of people? OK, and uh, that should give you a nice, uh, a good meaty kind of case study for that. But don't forget to kind of go online and have a look at some of the videos on YouTube about the Olympic Park, the regeneration of the Olympic Park. There's some really good um, documentaries and stuff out there that you can get lots and lots of additional uh, case study detail for. OK, that is uh, urban regeneration and the Olympic Park and different players.